Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well and staying safe and healthy during this time. Um, today I'll be walking you through Moss Landing Marine Lab's temporal trends from 2007 to 2019. A bit of background about myself. My name is Kinsey Matthews and I just finished my first year in the Fisheries and Conservation Biology Lab here at Moss Landing Marine Labs. I was lucky enough to participate in CCFRP's summer sampling period of 2019 and I am very much looking forward for a second year of sampling starting this summer. For my thesis, I will be studying the effects of urchin barrens on rockfish movement. And that brings us to our program, the California Collaborative Fisheries Research Program, also known as CCFRP. Dr. Rick Starr and Dr. Dean Wint developed this program back in 2007. It was devised with a variety of inputs from anglers, people in academia, and resource managers. It uses standardized hook and line surveys to monitor marine protected areas. The overall goal of our project is to conduct scientifically sound research with the intent of using this data for fisheries management. The fishery independent sampling protocols that are used for this program have been implemented since 2007 when the network of NPAs was established in Central California. We completed our 13th season last fall and are very excited to begin our 14th season in 2020. So here's a quick summary of Moss Landing Marine Lab's CCFRP program. Since 2007, we have used nine CPFVs, which are commercial passenger fishing vessels. We've had 15 skippers and we've come out of four harbors. We've had 216 sampling days at sea, 833 volunteer anglers, over 7,000 hours of fishing, 73,439 fishes from 51 different species, and over 22,000 fishes have been tagged and released. Here are some pie charts depicting the different species compositions by area and by NPA slash reference sites within that area. The two areas that are shown here are Ano Nuevo and Point Lobos. As you can see, blue rockfish dominate each area, whether it's in the NPA or the reference site. Ano Nuevo has significantly more black rockfish than Point Lobos, while Point Lobos has more kelp rockfish and olive rockfish than Ano Nuevo. Basically, each area has a different composition of species. And within each area, there are differences between the NPA and the reference site. Okay, so now we're about to get into some of the data, but before I do that, I want to orient everyone to the concept of catch per unit effort, or CPUE, since it will be coming up a lot in the next series of slides. CPUE, or catch per angler hour, is calculated by taking the total number of fishes caught divided by the amount of time that fishing occurred, multiplied by the number of anglers fishing, with any angler over or under fishing time factored in accordingly. That's why it's really important for you, as anglers, to tell us when, you've, when you are not fishing during the drift or if you fished longer than planned so that we can incorporate that into our CPUE calculations. And overall, this is a way to standardize our data and compare among different years and different regions of sampling. Here I want to get you familiar with the style of graphs that we'll be using to show catch per unit effort and mean lengths for our top species. The MPA will always be in red and the reference site will always be in blue. Year will always be on the x-axis, and the metric, either CPUE or length, will always be on the y-axis. In addition, the mean length plots will have a dotted line, which denotes the length that 50% of fish are mature. In previous years, we have gone through species by species and shown you the CPUE and mean length plots together. We are trying a different approach this year and lumping species together by the general trend they exhibit for CPUE and mean length separately. We'll start with catch rates and then move on to mean lengths. Hopefully this will help you take away some of the bigger picture messages. Before we dive into the plots, I want to go over some of the ways in which you might be seeing an MPA effect. Since the MPA is protected from fishing, you should see overall larger fish in the MPA compared to fished areas, meaning that the red MPA line for lengths should be above the blue line. Additionally, there should be more fishes in the MPAs compared to fished areas, meaning that the red MPA line for catch rates should be above the blue line. All of the graphs shown here show potential MPA effects. For our first comparison, we're going to look at catch rates between gopher rockfish, which are on the left, and decon rockfish, which are on the right, at Anuanuevo and Point Lobos. 
As you can see, the general trend is that both the MPA and reference lines track each other fairly well at Ano Nuevo and Point Lobos for both species. For our next comparisons, we are going to look at catch rates between lean cod on the left, yellowtail rockfish on the right, and black and canary rockfish, which are on the next slide. At Ano Nuevo, the MPA and the reference CPUE track each other fairly well throughout the years. You can also see that the catch rates are relatively low. At Point Lobos, in the early years of the study, the MPA and the reference CPUE lines also mirrored each other. However, between 2013 and around 2016, CPUE for both species spiked in the MPA. And in the past three years, they have begun to converge again. Here we have canary rockfish on the left and black rockfish on the right. In contrast to the last two plots, CPUE for canary rockfish and black rockfish track each other fairly well at Point Lobos. You can also see that we don't catch very many for these species. It's at Ano Nuevo that we see the spike in CPUE for both species around 2013-2014. Notice, however, that the spike for canary rockfish was in the MPA, while the spike for the black rockfish was in the reference site. Similar to lingcod and yellowtail rockfish, the CPUE for these species begins to converge again in the past three or so years. For our next comparisons, we are going to look at catch rates between blue rockfish on the left, olive rockfish on the right, and copper rockfish and vermilion rockfish on the next slide. At Ano Nuevo, CPUE between the MPA and the reference sites track each other through time for both species. At Point Lobos, the CPUE for the MPA starts up higher than the reference sites. The lines converge between 2019 and 2015, and then diverge in more recent years with the CPUE for the MPA being much higher than the reference site. Here we have copper rockfish on the left and vermilion rockfish on the right. Just like the previous plots, CPUE at Ano Nuevo for these species tracks each other through time, with a slight spike in the MPA CPUE for vermilion rockfish. At Point Lobos, the CPUE for the MPA starts off higher than the reference site. The lines converge between 2009 and 2015 and then diverge with the MPA CPUE being much higher than the reference CPUE in recent years. Now we are going to transition to talking about mean lengths of different species at Point Lobos and Ano Nuevo. In this slide, we are comparing the mean lengths of canary rockfish on the left and black rockfish on the right. Remember that the dotted line denotes the length at which approximately 50% of the population of that species is reproductively mature. For canary rockfish, that length is 44 centimeters, and for black rockfish, that length is 41 centimeters. At both Ano Nuevo and Point Lobos, we catch only immature canary and black rockfishes. You can see that at Ano Nuevo, the mean length of black rockfish in both the MPA and the reference sites follow the same general pattern, and that we consistently catch larger black rockfish inside the MPA. However, if you look at Point Lobos, for both of these species, those trends are way more muddled and far less consistent. In this slide, we will be looking at the mean lengths for gopher rockfish. At both Point Lobos and Ano Nuevo, we catch only mature fish, which you can tell from the MPA and reference lines being well above that dotted line. And in general, the size range we catch for this species is very narrow, which you can also tell from the lines being relatively, relatively close together and the error bars being fairly small. And then we have the species that don't conform to a clear-cut trend. I've pulled lean cod on the left and vermilion rockfish on the right as just two examples, but we do see other species that are similar. For both of these species, you can see that the mean lengths of fishes we encounter straddle that 50% dotted maturity line. Some years we see only mature fishes, some years we see only immature fishes, and others it can be a mix. We also see variations by MPA and reference site, where in some years we see larger fishes in the MPA, and others we see larger fishes in the reference site, and vice versa. Now we're going to scale up from individual species and talk about general trends in Central California's MPAs. This bar graph shows the estimated adult proportion of the population. Think back to the length plots I showed with the lines to denote the length at which approximately 50% of the population of that species is mature. This is a different way of interpreting that data. You can think of those bars as the compilation of data points above that dotted line. 
For some species, like kelp rockfish and gopher rockfish, all of the species that we catch are above the length at 50% maturity in both the MPA and the reference site, which is why the bars for both of those species go all the way to one. For other species like canary rockfish and black rockfish, all of the fish we catch are below the length at 50% maturity for both the MPA and the reference site, which is why they don't have bars. Alternatively, for the other common species we encountered, shown here, we see more mature fishes inside the MPA compared to the reference site, which you can see from the red bar being consistently longer than the blue bar. Here we are going to look at general trends in Central California MPA performance in regards to biomass per unit effort, or BPUE. To calculate BPUE, the lengths of each caught fish was converted to weights using published length-to-weight relationships for each species. Weights were then used to calculate the total BPUE during each visit to a sampling cell. BPUE for each grid cell and each day were averaged over each year to estimate trends in CPUE and BPUE over time in MPA and reference sites. Calculating BPUE combines the catch rates with an extrapolation of the mean length data to create a metric that is often used in fisheries management. I'd like to wrap up this data-heavy section with a few take-home messages. Through our catch and release hook and line surveys, we are generally seeing greater catch rates, biomass, size, and reproductive potential inside Central California NPAs. Think back to those red lines being generally higher than those blue lines. However, when we dive in and parse out our data, there are definitely species and area-specific differences in sizes and abundances. So trends for a particular species in a particular NPA cannot necessarily be applied to other species or different areas. One of the benefits of the long-term data set we are trying to establish is that we can track these changes through time, both aggregated and divided by species for a particular MPA. Because the fishes we study, mostly rockfish, are so long-lived and slow to mature, it may take more time to detect these changes. Thank you all for listening and tuning in to our workshop. We'd like to thank all of our collaborators who have been instrumental for the success of CCFRP. We have our contact info listed here, so feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions about our program. Additionally, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. Thanks again.